Hi, this is Kevin Croke, head coach with UCD Rugby Club. In this series of interviews in conjunction with club sponsor Crow, we talk to past and present players who share their memories of the club and how it has impacted their career both on and off the field. In this interview, I catch up with Will Connors and Hugo Keenan. They talk about what UCD means to them and their families, the step up from schools into club rugby and how UCD helped them along their journey from Irish Sevens, Leinster, Ireland, and their involvement in tag rugby. Lads, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Um, what was the attraction in joining UCD for both of you? And what were your first impressions when you came in? I suppose I, I was in a year a year before Will, um, being in the year above women's school. Um, I was lucky enough, I had my older brother, who Rob, who um, had sort of experience uh, going into that under 20s UCD setup, and he was the one who encouraged me to to get involved. Um, so it, I found probably the reason that why I went for UCD is it was a good mix of that top level rugby that um, you wanted to play, playing in that sort of under 20s top division, and then also the chance to meet new people from different schools, different backgrounds, um, and I suppose to make friends that way. So that was um that was sort of the reasons why I got in and um it it was a great way to do it. And you're at under 20s level, you're playing with all lads around similar ages, year above, um, and with the two teams different levels and whatnot. So it was competitive. Um yeah. Yeah, I suppose I was similar enough. Um I came in um, through the Ad Astra, which is obviously a nice little one, one uh, Barry can have to <laughs> have anything to boast about, but uh, <laughs> no, but uh, ser- like in all seriousness, there was Noel Mack, he was uh, my coach in school, um, and he obviously went to went over to UCD. And you know, he he talked about the quality of rugby that was being played there, and you know, the expectations of you know, winning AI, AIL and stuff. And I suppose coming out of school, that's you want to put yourself into the the best possible position so you know it was a bit of a, a no-brainer to put myself forward in TCD and to be honest I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I'd say I'd initially anticipated I think um, the lads that you end up making friends with in there and stuff you know obviously Hugo and then I'm living with Jimmy O'Brien and people like that there's um, there's a great bunch of our under 20s and uh, we're quite lucky we, we had quite a strong under 20s team so um, you know, we were um, we were winning every week, and um, to even get a chance to play kind of AAL in your first season was uh, was something something special. I was uh, part of that team. We won over against uh, Old Belvo and Donnybrook to the Leinster League. So do you know there was yeah yeah, yeah. I played in that final as well. In, in I uh, don't I think you were playing J ones then, Barry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like to get a taste of silverware in your first year is something something not many people get the chance to do so I think from for me yeah UCD going there it was a great great chance. You guys both had some success in in school in rugby Um, I think you may have played against each other a couple of times how did you find the transition from school into club rugby and how did you find competing with players that you had previously competed against? Yeah, you forget about it pretty quickly. I think like once you start training with lads, you have to sort of come in with that open mindset. Um, I suppose you you might have known a few from underage setups with Leinster and stuff, and and it's just about getting to know the other lads. And it's always those, those piss ups and the the after game drinks and things like that, and the social events around training and matches and stuff. That's what brings you close together and. Um, like it's always um, like a regular going to the UCD clubhouse post game and things like that. So the rivalries from school and whatnot, um, like Porridge is still a bit bitter about me beating them in the uh, senior cup final. But uh, <laughs> most other lads, we forget it pretty quickly and move on. And then it's all about, I suppose, winning winning silverware with UCD as, uh, as, as Porridge was saying earlier. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, same same idea there. You know, it's uh, you do kind of forget about the competition you had. I suppose only a couple of months earlier, uh, with some of the school guys. But like you said, it's uh, lads like Barry and stuff that would have been the year ahead of you. Like he wouldn't have had too much of an influence with Black Rock. So 
like those kind of guys you wouldn't really fear playing with. Uh, you wouldn't have really known them before. So you kind of get to meet guys like him and stuff. And uh, yeah, I suppose it's a, it's great in that aspect. Just croaky to clarify things. Parge is starting to call me Barry now, just in, in case that's confusing you. Uh, <laughs> Everybody has a game that they can remember vividly for lots of different reasons. Is there a game that sticks out to you guys from your time in UCD? I suppose for me, it was um, when we beat Belvo in the Leinster Senior Cup final. Um, it was my second year out of school. Um, and I'd only about maybe three or four appearances um, playing for the UCD first team. Um, and I remember got a bit of a run before we beat Lansdowne um, in the semi-final and then went on to play Belvedere in the final in Donnybrook. Um, and we won um, a bit of silverware with under 20s, but that's that was the only time I ever won something with the with the first team. Um, so yeah, that was probably the, the most special one that sticks out. And a good night out afterwards. That, oh, by God, straight oh. to Hardigans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that obviously would have been one of my like one of my most memorable games. But I think uh, the one that probably stands out the most is uh, that same year. You know, playing Clontarf uh, in the in the semi final. That was uh, that was a, a tough one to take. You know, tough pill to swallow. I think we'd had such a strong start to the season. I hadn't been playing any of those games, and it's nearly like when I got involved with the senior team, we started losing games. So uh, I don't know how. To, I don't know if that uh, if there's anything for me to do with that. But yeah, like I think that it was such a for my first year out of school uh, to get a flavour of that. Like it was, I remember it was packed down in Tariff, and uh, like it was a brutal game. I think it was. Uh, like it was as close to a professional game as as I'd ever played. Like so, no, it was that was a cool experience. Obviously, come out on the wrong end of it, but stands I, out. I remember that game as well, Crokey, and just the standard of players in it. I think like Nick McCarthy, Ross Byrne, Adam Byrne, uh, Barry Daly, Joey Carberry, Dan Levy, like Patter Tim, and so many Leinster and pro players. Um, were playing in that game so I wasn't I couldn't even get into into the squad um but I, I was there in Tarp watching it um so yeah I can I can see why Will uh remembers that one. Big hallmark of university rugby is the colours match um it's it's something people don't know about until they come in and then it becomes a a big part of the experience could you guys maybe tell us some of your experiences of colours games? Crokey, unfortunately, that's one thing, one of my regrets from club rugby is that I never got my colours with the with the first team. Yeah, that was a pity. I played on the under-20s colours in the, those colours games, but I was always dragged um, off to sevens and that sort of time. It, it, it would always happen around April and that Hong Kong tournament was always knocking about then. So, um, yeah, it's something my old man and my brother still slag me about not, not having my colours um so but i suppose porridge i don't know if you put if you played did you you got the believe it or not i was uh i was part of the sevens as well so i never had <laughs> a chance either we were we're actually incredibly luck, unlucky because the first year of under 20s the, that away game to trinity um the one i remember we lost um that was just a week after the first the last six games so we weren't allowed to play that Mm. For the un- and then the other two that we would have been available for we were um, there was yeah Hong Kong and then there was um, the tournament with Co-Optimus which uh, a seven tournament which was a cap the last the first and last time he's ever been the captain of a team <laughs> but yeah to play colours which is definitely something we're going to have to change Lads you were both high profile players uh, at a schools level coming into UCD was there any player in UCD that really stood out to you when you were playing here? Uh, I think my the standout player to me in UCD, uh, Barry Daly, and I think uh, he has to be the like the most athletic uh, athletic freak. Like he was huge for UCD, and he came into Leinster and was obviously had just as big an impact. I think um, he was just incredibly unfortunate with injuries, but like for UCD, he was huge. I think the those years when um, like 
when we had been doing well, like when I'd been early in there, he was he was hugely part of that, and then he was hugely part of Leinster's success. I think he was yeah, hardly done by injuries. Grogi, the person who probably stood out for me all the way up was maybe Greg Jones. So he'd always played underage with him and stuff. But um, yeah, he was absolutely incredible at AIL level in under 20s all the way up. Um, and like he was good on, on and off the pitch as well. He was a great man for a kiss up then. Um, and he's obviously going well in Ulster up north now. So um, yeah, I'd say him. What words would encapsulate UCD for you? I suppose friendships and uh, the crack. <laughs> Yeah. Um, definitely too like the the main the lads you get to know through it and like I, st- I still have a WhatsApp group with about eight of um, the under 20s lads from my first year um, still active and still going and we, we meet up that time for pints and stuff and it's a collection of different um, different lads from different schools different areas and stuff like that so hopefully that will that'll stick on and the traditions will keep going in that regard I'm gonna to have to rob his uh his words again, but I think <laughs> add to his point. Uh, I think it's not it's not only like us like as players that really get those friendships. I think when you look off the field, like um like my dad, for example, PK, the it's like there's um like there's a great bunch there, and they all they all have great crack together at the games and stuff. And I think um for everyone involved, it's a very inclusive club. I think everyone involved. Um, get something out of it and uh, I think that's the the nice bit about it it's, uh, it's quite a tight tight family and um, I know that's that's it really The focus oftentimes with UCD Rugby is the, the on-pitch activities um, what off-pitch initiatives did you guys get involved in? Uh, yeah there was uh, me and Paris were both involved in the UCD Tag Rugby so um we, I got involved in sort of the formation of it firstly, so I was more in charge of um, the refs and organising all that aspect and we got um, about 10 lads from, uh, from our under-20s team. We got them fully trained by Dudley Phillips as our RFU tag refs and then we'd come down on Monday night and um, just ref, ref games and... Uh, Tyga O'Leary and a few lads, uh, Robin Reedy and uh, Hannah and stuff, they they were the organisers and then uh, they'd just link in with me and I'd get a few of the lads down and that that was great fun. Um, you'd be reffing some of your mates sometimes, so you'd be giving a few dodgy decisions here and there. But it, it was a it was a mixed um it was a mixed league and stuff like that, and it was for a social um just for the social aspects of it so it was great to get involved in something like that and um it was enjoyable at the same time um i know parage was uh at fault for a few dodgy decisions and he got a lot of complaints but uh i was it was good crack i'd be getting run out at the end of the night nearly it was brutal yeah. oh. nearly as bad as johnny glynn yeah <laughs> <laughs> between the two, to be between the two of us we nearly had the whole thing shut down and so yeah <laughs> But no, nah, it was good crack. Uh, Barry would be going down with the phone out and the full lens gear on, looking to see could he get any numbers at the end. <laughs> he's still, he's still waiting. 